Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I'm giving you another option of how, how to do a double barrel cake. And if you don't know what a double barrel cake is, it's basically two tiers that are the same size that are iced into one really tall tier. And I like to do this sometimes because when you have a really tall tier, it gives you more space to decorate. So if you need to have big, if you wanna have like a big statement decoration on your cake, or if you need more room for decorations to fit, then that's when I would do a double barrel cake. Now I did post a video a couple years ago of how I do this and I only used three layers and I torted those layers, but this time I'm using four layers and making it a little bit taller. And you can do either one depending on how tall you want the cake to be. So I will link that other video below. And at the end of the video, I will also show you a bunch of pictures of cakes that I made that have double barrel tiers. So you can see some examples. So let's get started using four seven inch round cakes to make this double barrel cake. I have them baked and wrapped and they were in the freezer and then I took them out and I thawed them for about four hours before I started this process. And I just like to take my scissors and trim off the excess that's hanging over the edge before I level them. I have this Wilton leveler. I can try to find something similar and link it below. And I'm just leveling off the tops and I usually save the tops for the birds or my neighbors. <laughs> and then I like to take the scissors and just trim off that excess just to make that edge nice and clean. And then I have some simple syrup here. I have a video showing you how I make the simple syrup and I will link that below. And I just like to lightly spray the simple syrup on the tiers and I'm getting a little bit of that icing down on the board and sticking that first tier on top, making sure that it's even on the board and filling that with some blueberry buttercream. This is lemon cake with blueberry buttercream icing. And then I'm putting on the next layer and pressing that down. And then I wanna take my sewing ruler to measure how tall I should cut the straws. And then I can use both ends of the straw. Sorry, it's a little blurry here, my head was in the way. But I'm just measuring how tall the straw has to be. And then I take my scissors and I cut that marker off. And I can throw that piece away that has a marker on it. So I did that for two straws, so I have four pieces total. And then I stick that in the cake and push the straws all the way down. And then I wanna get a little bit more icing. And I'm just doing a thin layer of the icing on the top of this tier. And then I'm getting a six inch cake circle and this is a seven inch cake. So I want a cake circle that's slightly smaller than the cake, so just one inch smaller. And then I'm doing the same thing for the other two layers, leveling them, cutting them, spraying them with the simple syrup. And then I'm getting a little bit of melted chocolate melts down. That way that top section of the cake won't slide around. And then I'm just filling it again with that blueberry buttercream and I'm just letting the buttercream go over the edges and place that top layer on there. And then I just wanna take my spatula and basically patch the seams of this cake. So I'm just filling in that center seam with the excess buttercream. And then using my spatula to scrape off any excess. And then I'm taking the plastic that those layers were originally wrapped in and just wrapping that around the cake. And that way I can let this settle overnight until I'm ready to crumb coat it and ice it. So that settled for about 12 hours. And then before I crumb coat this, I just want to take my spatula and remove any excess icing that's bulging out. From the cake settling, it pressed some of the icing out to some of the filling out the sides. And I just want to remove that before I crumb coat the cake. And now I'm using my American buttercream. I have video showing you how I make that and I will link it below. And I'm getting a very thin layer of icing on here. So this is just a crumb coat. It's not going to look perfect, but I'm starting at the very bottom and working my way up. And I'm really taking my spatula and pressing that against the cake. That way no air bubbles are going to form behind this icing. So you just want to take your time. I'm working in small sections and making sure I really press that icing against the cake. And at the very top, I'm making sure the icing comes over over the top of the cake that way I can level it off and then I also want to make sure I fill in the top of the cake as well now usually I use this bench scraper but that is not tall enough so I need to use this very tall one but I don't have space in my pot to dip it in the pot so I run it under really hot water to heat up that metal I'm doing that off camera so you can't see me doing that and then after it's really hot I take a paper towel and just remove the water. So I'm just using a hot blade, it's not wet. And I'm just trying to hold that straight and I'm turning the turntable with my other hand just to get rid of the excess icing. And then I'm trying to hold that spatula 
pretty level with the top of the cake. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a crumb coat. I'm just removing that excess icing. And that looks good. I'm gonna put that back in the refrigerator for about five hours so the icing can solidify before I do this next step. Now I'm going to do the final coat of icing and I do have a video where I go into detail on how I do this and I will link that below. But I'm getting a little bit of icing down on the bottom. So I'm making this about a quarter of an inch thick. You wanna make sure you do the same thickness the whole way around. And again, I'm starting at the very bottom of the cake and once I have the very bottom done, I'm going to start on the center part of the cake. And I am making sure that I am pressing this icing down against the cake. I don't want any air bubbles to form behind it. So I push it down and I'm really taking my spatula and just spreading it on there to make sure no air bubbles form behind it. And then again, I'm making sure that it comes over the top of the cake. That way I can easily level it off. And once I have that all done, I'm just taking a little bit more icing and filling in from the center down to the bottom of the cake. I'm going to use my bench scraper and remove a lot of this icing, but I just want to make sure it's as even as possible from top to bottom before I start scraping. So I'm running that bench scraper under the very hot water and then taking my paper towel and wiping off the water before I start to remove this excess icing. And again, Every time I'm doing that, like I'm running it under the water, you don't see me do that. So I remove the excess icing, I run it under the water to clean it off and heat up the blade, and then I wipe a paper towel on it to dry it before I use it against the cake. You don't wanna put a wet bench scraper against the cake. So I'm trying to hold this as vertical as possible and I'm just working in little sections. You don't wanna do this too many times because then if the buttercream starts to set, it'll start to crack. So the less that you do this, the better it'll turn out. And I just had a little bubble in the icing there, so I'm popping it with a toothpick before I get this Viva paper towel and press it against the side of the cake. So do you see that top edge, how there's kind of like a little line there? I'm taking my fingers and I'm lightly pressing that paper towel against the cake to remove any imperfections in the icing. So this is a crusting buttercream. I use, you can see a line in there. I'm gonna remove that line, but I use American buttercream. It forms a crust on the outside, so it's not going to stick to the paper towel. This method will not work if you use a, a, a buttercream, like meringue buttercream, because it does not form a crust. Now I'm taking my bench scraper, I'm sorry, I'm taking my fondant smoother, and I'm pressing that paper towel against the cake and see I'm trying to remove that little um, line that's towards the top of the cake and I'm really pressing that icing flat. So I'm just doing this around the entire perimeter of the cake and I'm trying to keep the cake in a perfect circular shape so I'm not pressing too hard against the cake. Now I'm just taking my spatula and removing a lot of that excess icing that's sticking off the top before I level this. So I'm dipping my spatula in that hot pot of water wiping it off with the paper towel every time before I do this. So I'm getting eye level with the cake and I'm pressing that spatula back level. So I am removing that excess icing and I'm realigning that back half of the spatula with the line I just made. So that way I can keep it as level as possible. And again, I go over this in my video where I explain how to ice a smooth buttercream cake and that will be linked in the description. After I level off the top, I'm just taking that paper towel one more time and just refining it, making sure it's perfectly round. And I'm gonna stick that back in the refrigerator for about five to 10 minutes before I do the final smoothing process. So that icing is cold and it is really set so it's not gonna stick to this paper. And now I'm doing the paper smoothing process, just taking that paper and smoothing it out with my fondant smoother, just to remove any of the lines that that paper towel created in the icing. And look how smooth and beautiful that buttercream icing looks. Now I just have to refine that top edge one more time. So again, I'm sitting eye level with the top of the cake and just using my spatula, holding it as level as possible and just removing that excess icing and trying to get a really crisp, sharp edge on the top. And then I like to take a little bit of that hot water and put it on the very top of the cake and use that to smooth out the icing on the top. And I take my spatula from the outer edges and just press in just to make sure that I'm refining that edge of the cake so it looks nice and sharp. And here is your double barrel buttercream ice cake. So there's the double barrel cake. I will link my video where I go into complete detail on how I ice smooth buttercream cakes in the description below for you. And that really tall bench scraper is a game changer when making these double barrel cakes. You can do it with a shorter 
bench scraper, but you could get a line. It's, it's just easier. <laughs> I would just recommend to get a taller bench scraper. I will try to find the one that I used and I will link it in the description. So I'm going to put over here some pictures of cakes that I made with double barrel tears. Sometimes I just do one tier, like this purple drip cake or this unicorn cake. And most of the time I do multiple tiers and have at least one of the tiers be a double barrel cake. So this line profile cake, the top tier had to be a double barrel. So I had enough decorating space along with this Hamilton cake for the costume for the middle tier. I needed it really tall so I could fit all those decorations on there. So a lot of times when I do cakes that have costumes or uniforms, I end up doing a double barrel cake. Couple examples, this wedding cake that has those belt buckles, not belt buckles, but little buckles. <laughs> that tier is a double barrel, along with this Chicago Cubs cake. Go Phillies, but Chicago Cubs. <laughs> um, in order to get that belt around the bottom and have enough space for the logo and everything else, that had to be a double barrel tier. And also this football cake that I made for John Runyon of the Eagles, little uh, name drop there. <laughs> But that bottom tier had to be tall enough so I would have enough space to fit everything. And then I would just stack this just like any other normal cake. It does have that cardboard circle in the middle and those straws in the bottom half supporting the top half. So it's not going to fall apart and it's easily stackable. And I do have videos showing you how I stack my cakes and I will link that below. So I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it below. And just a reminder, I do have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. All that information is in the description. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you could check out my website. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I'm so grateful for you. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.